Catalonia, pro-independence activists clash with Spain over Catalan independence. Or, if you like, how to radicalize secessionists. We're going to be talking about the Catalan problem in wake of some, some well, some big stories that are happening over there in Barcelona. If you're Catalonian, you say Barcelona. If you're Spanish, you say Barcelona. So we're going to be talking about what's going over there in Barcelona, which is the capital of the region, Catalonia. So before I begin my report, now let me first identify myself. I am Paul Gordon of iState TV, and this is Newswatch that you're watching. So before I begin my report on what's going on in Catalan, let me preface this report by saying... Do you want to radicalize and grow the Catalan secessionist movement? Because this is how you radicalize and grow the Catalan secessionist movement. And yes, that is my poor imitation of Archer. I apologize to everyone in advance and futurely, because I'm sure I'll do more Archer interpretations or in uh, <laughs> imitations or whatever the heck. I will do Archer stuff in the future. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let the reporting begin. For those of you following the whole Catalan fight for independence, you know that this is a story that goes back centuries. It is a tale tangled with a complexity that would rival the bureaucratic entanglements you might find in Kafka's The Castle. By the way, if you've read The Castle and you went through it straight through all the way, congratulations. It's quite a morsel to go through. To wit, this quote from the book seems very apropos to the events of today. One of the operating principles of authorities is that the possibility of error is simply not taken into account. This principle is justified by the excellence of the entire organization and is also necessary if matters are to be discharged with the utmost rapidity. Methinks that that might be, in part, what is going on here as far as how the Spanish government is responding to what's going on. Now, this report is not so much about the specifics of the Catalan fight for independence as it is about the actions taken recently by the Spanish government to cut the process off right here and right now to nip it in the proverbial bud. One key point to take into consideration is this. The Catalan region is responsible for nearly 20% of the Spanish economy and contains 7.5 million people. Catalan is a valuable jewel in the Spanish state. The Spanish state simply cannot allow Catalonia to secede. The Catalonians are calling for a referendum on whether to leave Spain and declare themselves sovereign. The referendum is scheduled to happen on October 1st of this year, 2017. The Spanish High Court, called the Constitutional Court, uh, struck down the Catalan law that made the referendum possible. And that ruling came on September 7th, 2017. The, this followed a statement by the Spanish Prime Minister, whose name is uh, Mariano or Ahoy. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I don't know if I should do like what, what a lot of uh, traditional like newscasters do. You know, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to uh, relate to you a story about uh, Mariano Ahoy. I won't do that. Okay. So this followed a statement by the Spanish Prime Minister Mariano Rajoy a couple of days earlier that made it clear the Spanish national government was in no mood to, and I'm going to put this in quotation marks, allow the Catalans to disassociate from their state. In part of his statement, the prime minister said the Catalan parliament's vote to allow the referendum to go forward was an intolerable act of disobedience. I mean, them der, der, them der fine words. 
He continued, the consultation is not going to happen in any case. We are defending national sovereignty, the principle of legality, and the institutions. We are defending the rights of all citizens, above all of the Catalans. Just let that float out there in the ether. That's right. He's arguing that the Catalans having a choice to decide whether they stay in the Spanish state or not is a violation of the rights of the Catalans. Uh, now folks, that is some high-class, top-notch doublespeak right there. It sure is. It sure enough is. Sure enough is there. So the prime minister's statement followed the statement made by the Catalan president, Carlos uh, Puigdemont. I mean, it's, it's uh, no, Carles. Carles Puigdemont. I mean, it sounds French. I don't know how you pronounce it in Spanish. I keep one. You know what? I'm going to go with the what it sounds like the French spelling. spelling. Carles Puigdemont. I'm sure that. <laughs> If it's pronounced really different and he, they, he hears this video, I'm sure he'll forgive me of my Frenchification of his word or of his name. Where he referred to the just passed referendum law as an act that stood for liberty and democracy. So after the court ruling, the regional government of Catalonia responded by declaring that it would still push forward with the referendum in direct defiance of the constitutional court's order one of the workarounds was to now consider the straw poll to be an informal poll rather than a legally binding referendum a move that was made by ross in response to the court ruling however no even that move was not acceptable by the spanish government the again i'm going to put this in quotes legality of the Catalan government to conduct even in an informal poll was questioned. So now the poll will be run by civic groups rather than government agents and agencies. But even that measure was not enough to placate the, uh, <laughs> the central power of Spain. Can Spain stop the Catalans from gathering to voice their opinion on being part of their union or state or whatever the heck they, do they call it a union? It's a whole bunch of regions and a union, I guess. I don't know. Francesco Holmes, Catalan's government spokesman, declared in a news conference that if what the Constitutional Court is seeking is to restrict the freedom of expression of citizens, it is clear that it won't be able to achieve that. <laughs> now that Spain has emerged to reduce the referendum to an informal poll conducted by the non-government by uh, well by non-governmental entities, uh, there's another word for that. It's called free associations. One would think the Spanish government would be happy. After all, the informal poll would have no legal binding. Even the results of the poll would be somewhat in doubt because. I think it goes without saying that a higher proportion of secessionists would take the time to participate in a non-binding opinion poll than would the Catalan loyalists who like things just the way they are. Thank you very much. I mean, think about it. I mean, you're, you're, there's going to be pressures to not show up wherever they're going to have these things because clearly the Spanish government is, is going to be scrutinizing it. So, so who, who, would, who, who would put forth that effort other than people who have a direct, uh, passionate uh, calling to do so? And that would be the people that want to change what is, not the people who want to keep what is. Again, if it was legally binding then that that impetus would be equal. But since it's not legally binding, that impetus is, is decidedly lopsided. So while anyone with a modicum of common sense would see the advantage for Spain to just let these secessionists have their playtime referendum date, that's not what, uh, what what's actually happening today. Now, of course, I 
I proffer the caveat that common sense, even a modicum of it, a tincture of it, was a prerequisite. Such a condition, of course, leaves out, as many of you folks know, who watch my videos regularly, I'm sure, would agree, because otherwise you're probably not watching my videos. Uh, mm, that, that leaves out most politicians. So this next bit might be explained by that rather unfortunate factor. First of all, let me point out that support for the secessionist is about 50-50. So any referendum vote, if it were legally binding, would would actually be a nail biter, and uh, it, it would it would be like late night, uh, maybe the next morning, and like it could come down to like hanging chads in some town somewhere. I have no idea. Hanging chads could loom in Catalan or Catalonia. Uh, that point is essential, though, when you consider the heavy-handed response of the Spanish government. So today, September 20th, as of the, the, the filming of this, this fine uh, uh, news report that you're not watching, Spanish authorities have arrested 12 people in raids. Among those arrested include, well, one of the secessionist leaders, Jose Maria Jove. Jove? J-O-V-E. Is that pronounced Jove? Jove? I don't know. I'm going to go with Jove. The Secretary General of Economic Affairs for the Catalan government. Europa Press, which is Spain's kind of official news outlet, reported that those arrested were mostly from the economic and foreign departments of the Catalan regional government. Details of the raid, though, are clouded in secrecy on the order of an unnamed judge. Now, there have been demonstrations ongoing all day today in the streets of Barcelona in support of Catalan independence. After the raids, the finance minister of the Spanish government has imposed financial restrictions on the Catalan government in an effort to ensure the Catalan government is not able to use these funds to pay for the October 1st referendum. The order, which is signed yesterday, September 19th, was actually just revealed today. It essentially places all control of spending by the Catalan government in the hands of officials in Madrid, the Spanish government, or the, yeah, the Spanish capital. So let us pause for a moment, folks. Just, just back up here for a second and take in the high-quality derpage. Now that's a technical term, uh, so I'm, I'm not, I'm not using it out of context here. This is, this is truly high-quality derpage going in. Let's, let's just take in the high-quality derp, derpage that is just been demonstrated by the national government the, of Spain. Now remember, support for independence in Catalonia is about 50%, perhaps a bit less. You've essentially managed to knock down a legally binding referendum to the level of a public opinion poll that will have built-in biases to it, biases that will pretty much discredit its results. Congratulations! You won! Yay! I'm not necessarily cheering on if they won, by the way. I'm, I'm for the secessionist of everything, so the uh, secede everything. <laughs> that should be secession now, secession everywhere. Uh, and your response is to essentially remove all of the sovereignty of the region of Catalonia. That's, uh, you see, uh, you know, the old saying goes something, something like this. He who has the gold has the power. So Madrid took all the gold from Barcelona. Uh, not from Barcelona. Barcelona's fine. I don't even know if it exists, but if it does exist, it's fine. But Barcelona, <laughs> yeah. Now, what do you think a move like this will do to the Catalans? Will it tilt the needle of support towards favoring the national government, or will it create more Catalan secessionists? I'm, I'm going to I'm going to actually sometimes I like to enter into like a present pretend zone where I, I imagine that officials suddenly there was that movie by Jim Carrey, Liar, Liar. So let's just say suddenly that they have a liar, liar moment there. Liar, Liar in the movie, Jim Carrey, uh, 
he suddenly he could, he had to tell the truth. He just always tell the truth. And so somebody would ask insulting, even against his will. So, so this is uh, this is, uh, if you will, the 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 government of Spain. Whoever is their spokesperson speaking. If if all of a sudden the liar liar thing happened to him. Uh, you see, uh, we decided that in the interest of preserving the rights of the cattle and citizens, we would strip them of their right t- to self-determination. You see, in order for a people to truly be free, they must first be in bondage to higher arbitrary powers. <laughs> oh, crap, did I just say that? Wow. Wow, I should not have ticked off that gypsy because clearly... I think it was a gypsy that cursed him, I think. I don't know. Correct me in the comments below if I'm wrong about liar, liar. So so that is absolutely what the Spanish national government is essentially saying to the so-called citizens of Catalonia. You can't have your pudding if you don't teach your meat, or you can't have your right to self-determination if you don't teach your boot-to-the-face sandwich. I mean, it's as simple as that. It's a... It's a rather simple thing, if you really uh, think about it. Uh. Carles uh, Pugemont appeared with the Catalan cabinet today. And remember, I'm, I'm, I, I Frenchified him so because I can't figure out what the Spanish pronunciation would be, so I Frenchified him. So he appeared today with the Catalan cabinet to denounce the arrest as well as the ham-fisted reaction by Spain's finance minister to seize the gold, so to speak. Pujemon accused the Spanish government of essentially ending Catalonia's self-rule. He called it a de facto reality, but I call it a plain reality. It, I mean, it's it's simple. If you if you can't dictate how your own resources are used, then 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 you, then you have no self-rule. It's it's it's, it's as simple as that, really. And now reports have come out that some pro-independence activists have gotten into physical altercations with Spanish Civil Guard officers. A number of protesters, and these reports range from tens to hundreds, attempted to block officers from taking Javier Puig. Puig, Puig. I don't know. It's another one I don't know how to pronounce in Spanish. So, in, into custody. And, you know, maybe that's because these are like Catalonian names or Catalan names, okay? So, anyway, Puig... Puig, P-U-I-G, is the IT manager in the Department of External Affairs of Catalonia, the department that was originally coordinating the October 1st referendum. And it makes sense that the Spanish government would wish to seize the IT manager of the department that was coordinating the October 1st referendum. It goes without saying, at least to me, that the raid most assuredly seized computer hard drives from the offices. These hard drives, I am sure, will will probably help the national government as it as it attempts to discover the network of secessionists for future targeting. So following this event, the unsuccessful attempt to block the arrest of, of Javier Puig, that's, that's the event, the Interior Ministry of Spain has announced that all scheduled time off and vacation times would be suspended for the Civil Guard and National Police officers. I think that this move telegraphs Spain's expected continued escalation with the Catalan government, which uh, thus far does not seem willing to back down from its plans to run the referendum this October 1st. So the Interior Ministry followed up this move with another announcement, and this one's a doozy that they have seized 10 million ballot papers, which had also been printed out by the Catalan regional government for the October 1st referendum. They also confiscated polling station signs, documents for voting officials, and other materials that were intended to be used for the October 1st referendum. Now, this last bit of news may not seem significant to you, but take into account that next to the Catholic Church and uh, possibly bullfighting, the most sacred institution in Spain, including in Catalan, is football, or as the British would call it, footy, or as the Americans call it, soccer. With that in mind, I give you this latest update to the story. The Barcelona, or Barcelona, 
Football Club made a highly political statement when they probably had to continue. Uh, well, they had to. Uh, how do I word this? One that they probably had to make if they are going to continue to be supported by Catalans. Uh, because the Catalans overwhelmingly favor the referendum, even if the support for the secession is only about half. So the club announced that it condemns anyone interfering with Catalonia's ability to conduct the, referen the referendum uh, this October 1st. The club's statement read in part that it condemns any act that may impede the free exercise of these rights. The club also stated that it will continue to support the will of the majority of Catalan people and will do so in a civil, peaceful, and exemplary way. So I do not pretend to be an expert on Spanish politics and certainly, certainly not Catalan politics. I do not pretend to understand the machinations behind the factions within Catalonia that support or do not support secession or the level of determination by any of these factions. However, I do understand basic human nature, and I especially understand the power of tribes, and I should add, I also understand the power of identity. Given the fact that a vast majority of Catalans support the referendum, even if many of the Catalan members of Parliament against the session were quick to support the Spanish Constitutional Court's judgment, I believe that I can fairly assume that Catalans, for the most part, for the most part support a high level of self-rule even if they don't support secession. What happens, though... When one tribe you belong to, in this case the Spanish tribe, begins to put its lead-weighted boot on the neck of another tribe you belong to, in this case the Catalan tribe, and that tribe, the Catalan tribe, is actually more essential to your identity than the Spanish tribe is. I'm, I'm, I'm betting that the net effect of these moves is that it will drive these Catalans inward. It will create an existential threat to an, on an identity that is far more important to you than the one now threatening that more core identity. So not only do these moves threaten that Catalan identity, they threaten a key component of that Catalan identity identity, their tendency to favor self-determination. That aspect, that aspect, that self-determination aspect of the Catalan identity is, uh, and I'm kind of going out on a limb here, but I, I think I have good reason to believe this, it, it, it's most likely very strong, even among the Catalan, and I'm going to call them loyalists. So to a certain degree, this is what happened in the American Civil War, the moment that Lincoln chose military action to force the first southern states back into the Union, he galvanized many southerners, including Lee, to be forced to make a hard choice that I surmise many were, were, were not quite willing to make, certainly not at that point, but they're kind of pushed to make that decision. And I think so it goes with the Spanish government as their heavy-handed moves are, uh, are sure to create more secessionists as well as radicalize those that are already secessionists. Even the most radical of secessionists will most likely swim deeper into the waters of, of, of radicalization. So rather than nipping this thing in the bud, the Spanish government is assuring that the issue of independence for Catalan will receive Yet another round of myth-building tales of sacrifice, martyrdom, heroism, tales that are sure to be powerful perpetuators of the Catalan story of independence, tales that are sure to be embellished and writ large on a stage that spans the constellations themselves. So at the end of the day, 
This is yet another story among many stories that illustrate a cold, hard reality. A reality few people are willing to face and possibly some of you who may be listening to this video right now. A reality the Spanish government is, is not only unwilling to face, but is one that it would want to hide from Catalonia citizens if, if that were indeed possible. And after all this buildup, um, I'm sure you're asking, well, Paul, what exactly is that cold, hard reality? And it's uh, actually, it's, it's, it's one of my, it's one of my little uh, phrases that I say all the time. There is no rule of law. There is only rule of power. You see, the judgment by the Constitutional Court had the power of words. Words that, by their very nature, create opportunities for obfuscation, differing interpretations. The ruling by the court was not a reflection of rule of law so much as it was a reflection of the recognition by the Spanish coercive enterprise, that's what I call states, coercive enterprises, and, uh, that the loss of the claim of ownership of the region of Catalonia would be a critical fail for that coercive enterprise for, 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 for Spain. So... What I don't know right now is I don't know the reality of power on the ground in Catalonia. How much, for instance, are the Catalonians, are the Catalans willing to pay, uh, willing to risk to remove themselves from the responsibilities, ob obligations of the Spanish course of enterprise? Uh, how much do they benefit from being part of that uh, course of enterprise? How much is the Spanish course of enterprise willing to pay, willing to risk to ensure that the region remains firmly under their control? I think we've already identified that they, they really they fundamentally uh, benefit from, 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 from that relationship. So clearly, the recent moves by the Spanish course of enterprise have done at least one thing. They have galvanized the secessionists. They have also most likely helped create even more secessionists. I believe that they have, by their actions, raised the cost of coercion for their enterprise in its efforts to hold on to this region known as Catalonia. Now, I can't make any specific predictions about what will happen in the near or the mid-future, as, as honestly, I just don't have enough data to support such a prediction. I can safely predict this. The Catalan issue is not going away anytime soon. Uh, that's probably a duh thing, because it's kind of existed for you know, 100 years. I can safely predict this. The Catalan issue is not only not going away, but the Spanish government just made it a much, much bigger problem than it was before the moves are made today. So, let me end this report by how I began. With this warning to the coercive enterprise of Spain. So if you're listening, coercive enterprise of Spain, I don't know if there's like one entity that's like uh, calling YouTube looking for advice from from uh, uh, American uh, YouTubers. But if there are, if, if, if Mr. Spanish coercive enterprise is, is on the tubes of you, I, I want you to listen to this and just 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 take this in. And I'm gonna. I'm once again. I'm going to do my best Archer interpretation. Do you want to radicalize and grow the Catalan secessionist movement? Because this is how you radicalize and grow the Catalan secessionist movement. Now I'm never gonna get that Archer interpretation. I mean, I'm never, <laughs> never, never gonna get that uh, Archer imitation thingy down. I'm just not gonna do it. Okay. So there you go, folks. That is my report. That's what I have. My name is Paul Gordon, and I am with 
iState.tv. This is the iState News Watch. If you would like to see more uh, of this story and you want to actually read uh, read the article that this is from, the article that I wrote, you can go to iState.tv or you could check the check the hey here you go check the comments below. Check the description and the comments below because I will post the link to the article in both the art in the uh, in both the comment section as well as the description section. And above all else, if you like what you see, make sure that you subscribe to this YouTube channel, and that if if and when you subscribe to the YouTube channel, make sure you hit the little bell that that tells you that. Uh, well, that gives you the notification that tells you when I when I make uh, my my next video, whenever that might be. And also, if you like what we're doing here on iState, and we, we we're not just doing you won't just see stuff that I do. Well, you'll see other stuff on here. I, I think if you call the YouTube channel, you'll see that. Be sure that you share share my, share share the channel, share videos. You know, help a help 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 a, help a brother out. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's it. That's all we have for today. We'll see you. Uh, we'll see you the next time uh, we do a video. How about that? We'll see you the next time we do a video. How metaphysically wonderful is that?